So um, a brief diversion on partial derivatives. Okay, so for most of you, this will be uh, stuff you already know. So um, I'm sorry if that's the case, but uh, but still you might find it amusing. So, <clears throat> so partial derivatives really arise when you have a function of more than one variable. So suppose u is a function of x and y. So whenever you have such a function, you have a choice when you take the derivative, you have a choice in, you know, uh, the variable that you take the derivative uh, you have a choice in the variable with respect to which with respect to which you take the derivative, right? Here we have x and y. So partial derivatives are the building blocks of uh, making more complicated objects. So the partial derivative of this function u with respect to x, we know the definition is uh, the limit of a small parameter, say h, going to zero from the positive direction and u x plus h y minus u of x and y divided by h, right? So this is the definition of partial derivatives. And in thermodynamics, where, you know, uh, we have often, you know, state functions, which are functions of many state variables, we want to be clear about what is being kept constant and what is not being kept constant. So, you know, so we uh, uh, use a notation that when we are taking the derivative with respect to x, we are keeping y constant. As you can see here and here, the value of the y, of y is the same. So usually, you know, we don't use this kind of notation, but in thermodynamics, we use this. Uh, this is the convention. So that is one partial derivative, of course. Uh, we also have the partial derivative with respect to y, which is defined to be limit where h goes to zero from the positive direction of u. The value of x remains the same, <coughs> whereas the, is the value of y that we are changing divided by h. So these are things you know. <coughs> so we want to connect partial derivative with the differential element. So we want to, uh, so, okay. So by the way, we, in thermodynamics, we write this as, okay. So we want to connect this to the differential element d of u. You know, how is this related to d of u? First of all, it's a good question to consider what is d of u, right? Is that clear to everybody what, what this is? Um, when yeah. we go from one point to another, we calculate the change in this value. Really good, very good. Now he has nailed it. And so let me give you the geometric interpretation of you. Geometric interpretation of D of U, okay? So we have our independent variables, so which are X and Y. So I'm drawing here the X, Y plane and on the z-axis, we can draw the function u. 
which we will do in a minute. But now consider a path in the xy plane. So it's a, a smooth path. So I'm taking a smooth path in the xy plane. You know, what is a smooth path? Uh, it's basically a map from some interval, say, uh, let's call that interval S, and we can choose the parameterization. It doesn't have to be like that, but we can choose the parameterization to be, say, between zero and one. So it means zero is here and one is here. So this is S, uh, you know, along this path. So it's monotonically increasing as you go from here to here. And um, so suppose we have a point on the path, which I'm calling S0. And I move infinitesimally to S0 plus D of S. And let's call that, so a vector in that direction, infinitesimal vector in that direction, DS vector, right? So as I move in that direction, so we have a function. Let me, uh, you know, so suppose this is the function. So it's in the Z direction. It's some sort of a hill. So as I move in this direction, the function changes. And the change in that function is what we called du, okay? So the change du will depend on this little vector ds. Is that clear? If we chose yes, a sir. different path, suppose I chose a different path, say uh, something that went from here to say here, and let's call that, let's parameterize that path with say t, then as I go from say T0 to T0 plus DT, you know, that there will be a different change of DU. Even at this intersecting point, depending on which direction, if you're going this direction, or if you're going this direction, the DU will be different, okay? Okay, now this is, uh, so I mean, this is technically all very easy, I'm just, giving a geometrical interpretation because the technical details are you're supposed to learn in your calculus class, not in not here, right? So the value of your function u at the point s0 plus ds, of course, that you know that point has an x coordinate and a y coordinate and that and u is a function of that x coordinate and it is only a function of S0 and DS through that implicit, uh, you know, implicit uh, dependence. And then there is Y and Y is also S0 plus DS. So that thing we can, uh, you know, what we can do is that these guys, because DS is very small, we can do a Taylor expansion now, okay? So we are doing a Taylor expansion within the argument. So inside the argument, we have X of S zero plus say D of S, and then which is this little thing. And then we have DX by DS evaluated at S zero. And then there is a higher order term. And, uh, but we are not gonna take the higher order term. So that's why we are, I'm writing a uh, approximately equal sign. And then we also have y of s zero plus d of s, d of y, d of s, s zero, right? So this is, and then what we can do is that now we can expand this function in the Taylor series so we write another and we take the term of linear order. So we have u of uh, x of s zero 
y of f0. And then we have, so this is the infinitesimal uh, change. So we have uh, ds, dx by ds, s0. And here we have del u by del x. And this is essentially y. And this is evaluated at x at s0, y at s0. OK? So which is kind of uh, a bit heavy on the notation. But I'm just trying to be clear now. And this, the other second term will be similarly like that. So d of u, d of y, x. And then this is evaluated at s0 y of s zero, and there's going to be a higher order term. Right, so uh, the, del, the del of u is going to be this thing minus this thing. And therefore, and we can write, see that this, but this thing is nothing but d of x, and this thing is nothing but d of y. And therefore, we see that D of u is nothing but um, del u by del x, del x dx plus del u del y of x dy. Okay, so this is uh, what we use every day, but this is the geometrical meaning for it. Okay, okay. Is, is that clear? It should be pretty obvious, but uh, if, if it's not, that's fine too. You know, like, uh, I mean, I actually had to think twice before uh, I could come up with the, a clear geometrical way of looking at it. Any questions? Sorry, my air conditioning is broken, so I'm very thirsty because I'm sweating in my room. Uh, all right, so, so there's another perspective on this object. And the perspective is that D of U is, can be thought of as a gradient of U dotted with the DS vector. Right, mathematically, you can see that, right? When, where d of s is dx, the unit vector i, dy, the unit vector j. And so we see that morally speaking, d of u is the same thing as the gradient of the function u. And let me remind you what the gradient of the function u is. In two dimension, it's just nothing but d of u, d of x, y in the i direction plus d of u, d of y, x in the j direction. So this is the vector in the direction over, so this is the, this is essentially a vector in the direction in which, at this point, in which, you know, this function changes most rapidly, and its magnitude is proportional to that change. Okay, so that's what the gradient is, right? The gradient is, so, so, um, so this thing is in the direction in which u changes the most and its magnitude is proportional to that change. So if the change is small, it's small. If the change is big, it's big. Okay. All right. So 